Hi, I'm Glyn Dewis. Welcome to episode 35. And this week I've got three top tips and techniques that are going to help with your selections, your cutouts, and your compositing. Okay, so the first tip is all to do with cutting out. Now, a lot of techniques that you'll see online showing you how to make the perfect cutout involve taking an object off a pretty simple background. But that's not necessarily the case because what happens if we want to take something off a background that's actually quite busy and complicated and maybe the subject blends into it a little bit. So what I wanna do is show you something that you can use very, very quickly that's built already into Photoshop and has been for quite some time. Now we're gonna do it on this picture here. So this is a picture I've done recently, just had a bit of downtime and a bit of a play. It's a composite image as you can see here where I've added in these mice. But I want you to work with me for a second and I want you to imagine that the mice really were there. And what I want to do is extract this little fella here off the background and put him into a new scene. So ordinarily what you might think of doing, I mean there's lots of ways you can do cutouts in Photoshop, but this one's gonna be quite tricky. So you might think of going to something like the quick selection tool. So we'll press W on my keyboard, go to the quick selection tool, and I'm gonna click and drag around our little mouse uh, character here, just to sort of get as good a sort of selection as I can first off. Now anywhere that I go over, I can hold down my alter option key to take areas off the selection, but this is gonna be a quick selection. So I'm only gonna do this very, very quickly, full enough, just to get me in kind of like the ballpark area of where I wanna be. So we'll go for something like that. Let's have a look anywhere else and he's doing just a little bit on his back needs to be included and we'll take that little bit off the back of his tail. So once we've done that, I can then click at the top of the screen here where it says refine edge and then we can start to look at actually um, finessing the selection if you like. Got loads of different choices of backgrounds we can go to. I'm gonna go to on white. So now I can just see the mouse with nothing else around it. Now the thing here, because it wasn't originally on a plain background, we're gonna to start to see some of that background, original background, coming through the parts of his fur. And that's obviously what we don't want. We've got some sliders over here in the properties box here. So I'm gonna bring up the radius to see what that does for me. Bring it up and it's kind of picking up areas, but I can still see areas of that background coming through, especially around this top part of his head and going down this part of his back. Let's have a look what Smart Radius does. That doesn't do that much, but we've also got the Edge Detection Tool or the Refine Radius Tool. And I can now paint down his back to see if Photoshop can bring up any more of that kind of fur. The only problem is it starts to get a little bit weird as you can see there. So we're not gonna do that. I'm gonna click Cancel and do this selection really, really basically. Now that I've got my marching ants going around the mouse, all I'm going to do is go to the bottom of my layers panel and click on the layer mask icon. So that kind of does a very, very basic cutout. Obviously not looking brilliant at the minute, but what I can do is fake a cutout. I can fake fur. So what I'm gonna do is while I'm actually clicked onto the layer mask that I've just made here, as you can see that by the actual framing going around the layer mask, so I'm now working on that, I'm gonna get a brush and I'm gonna to go to the top of the panel here, choose a nice, simple, plain brush and quite a hard edge brush. Make sure there's no settings in it. We don't want any settings in there whatsoever. And I'm gonna make sure that the foreground is black. Because what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna paint away parts of the mouse fur. I'm actually trimming in down, but you might think why on earth would you be doing that? So I'm trimming it down just to get rid of any of that kind of background and excess fur as it comes down his back. Now, when you look at it, you think, well, that doesn't look like a realistic selection. But what we can do now is use a brush within Photoshop. So I'm gonna to go to the top left and from within the properties here, sorry, the actual um, brush options, the selection of different brush heads that I've got, these are all default within Photoshop. I'm gonna choose number 112. So it's almost like a blade of grass. Once I've clicked on it, I'm then gonna to go to the brush properties. And this is where in this little preview here, I can now make this brush appear how I want it to. So brush tip shape, I can use this little disc to angle it. 
like so. I can use the spacing to spread it out a bit, but I want this to look like fur. And if it gathers up a little bit like that, that's kind of looking like fur already. Shape dynamics will have the uh, size jitter way up because all the fur wouldn't be the same length. And because I'm using a Wacom Intuos Pro tablet, I've got pressure sensitivity. I'm going to click on pen pressure. And you can see now the, how that kind of varies the size and shape of the actual fur in this preview box here. Scattering, we'll leave that on. Color dynamics, well, we don't need that and we don't need transfer. So all I need to do now then is change my foreground color to white and I can do that by clicking on the little two-headed arrow icon here or just pressing X on my keyboard to flip it around. Reduce the size of the brush now with my left bracket key and I can just paint over down the, uh, the, the area that I originally brushed away down his back. So now I'm painting it in like so with this particular brush head. Now, as I come down his back, I want to angle that first. So I'm gonna go back to the brush tip shape and I can use the disc to change the direction of the fur. So I want it to be kind of like angled down now and I'll paint down his back like so. Now I would do this going all the way around my mouse and I'd actually make the brush really small in areas right over his ears, small around his mouth and around his feet and stuff. But kind of just to give you an idea, what would that look like now? Well, if I hold down my Alt or Option key and then click on the layer mask, you can see the effect it's having. So we're kind of faking the look of fur going round the mouse here rather than including parts of the back. We're actually using the fur that was originally there and just bringing bits of it back with this brush head. So that's just one technique that you can use for doing tricky or complicated cutouts when you've got fur or hair on the subject you're trying to take off the background. Okay, so tip number two is a compositing uh, tip. And this is where we wanna put this subject, this zebra, into this kind of scene here. Now, this is just to show you how you can actually put something into a scene where they're not stood on a solid floor. This one has got grass. So how can we make it look as if he actually is stood in the grass? Well, first of all, we need to select the zebra. So I'm gonna get my quick selection tool, click and drag inside my zebra. And Photoshop should cope with this really simply because you know we've got a plain white back background and we've got a character here that's got a lot of contrast in him so as these selection tools work on contrast it's not going to struggle to pick him all up here so let's just click and drag within the zebra and down on his nose and up on his ear something like that I'm just going to do this really really quickly once we've got him, uh, looks like he's selected, let's just make sure there's all his faces done. I'm then gonna click on the refine edge at the top of the screen, and then I'll just use something like the um, radius, just drag up the radius just a little bit. But I'll then use the refine radius tool just to paint down this part of his mane here so we can pick up all those fine hairs. So that's a, you know, this isn't a challenge for Photoshop at all. This is what it's really kind of made of. I've maybe missed a little bit on the bottom of his foot just down here and a little bit on his ear. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click OK to come out and then go to Quick Mask and then I can just get a black brush. A nice simple black brush, let's just choose a simple brush, 100% opacity, zoom in, and I'm just gonna paint in now just to include that part of his ear. This, this isn't a tip, this is just me making a, a fairly okay, decent-ish kind of selection. Okay, so we'll come out of Quick Mask by pressing Q. So now we can see we've got the marching ants going around our zebra. I'm then going to click on the layer mask icon at the bottom of the layers panel, like so. I've taken him off the background. Then I'm going to get my move tool by pressing V, click on him and drag him over into the scene containing the grass. Now this is purely for demonstration only. Now you can see now what I mean. He stood on grass and you can see it's almost like he's floating above the grass blades here. Now obviously if we're doing a proper composite here we'd be looking at adding in shadows and all that kind of stuff but what I want to do is just quickly show you how we can make it look as if he stood within the grass. So to do that I'm going to now click on the background layer. I'm going to get something like my uh, lasso tool, my freehand lasso tool and I'm then going to click and drag out a selection of the grass just underneath our zebra, like so. Once I've done that, I'm going to go to Layer, New, and Layer via Copy to put that selection of grass up on its own layer, and you can see that just there. Once I've done it, I'm then going to click and drag that to the top of the layer stack. Then I'm going to move it over to cover his feet, something like so. 
Doesn't look realistic at the minute, but now I'm gonna add a layer mask, a black layer mask to hide it, because then I want to just paint it in only where I want this grass to appear. So to add a black layer mask, we've got the layer mask icon at the bottom of the layers panel. I'm gonna hold down my Alt or Option key and then click on the layer mask icon. And you can see straight away that gives me a black layer mask. Now all I'm going to do is get a brush, Go to the top menu in the top left hand of the screen here, come down again and choose this one, number 112, which looks like a blade of grass. We've used it as fur already, we can now use it as grass. I'm going to click on the brush presets and again we're going to go in and look at changing the shape and size and dynamics of the brush to make it look like the grass. So we're going to have it going straight upwards. Spacing, we'll do something, we'll just spread it out a little bit more now. Shape dynamics, yeah, we're gonna keep that. And again, we're gonna use the pen pressure because I'm using the Wacom tablet. Scattering, definitely keeping that in. Color dynamics we don't need. And again, we don't need the transfer. Let's just close that out of the way. So all I need to do now then is just increase the size of the brush with my right bracket key. And I can just come in painting with the uh, white brush. Now you can see my foreground color is white. Normal blend mode at 100% opacity at the top here. And all I'm gonna do is just paint over areas of the grass just on the bottom around his feet. Like so, decrease the size of it with my right and left bracket key, and like so. So we can paint it in now to make it look as if he's standing within the grass. Now you can take your time doing this, but you can see straight away that takes it to make it just look a little bit more realistic. It's such a simple technique, but makes it now look as if he is stood within that grass, because we're only revealing parts of that grass selection we made with a grass shaped brush that we're now painting over his hooves. Really simple, really effective. Okay, so the third and final tip and technique for you is a cutout. I want to take off uh, this model here, I want to take her off the grey background and put it onto a coloured background. Now that would be quite a challenge, especially with all this kind of fine hair here. Now if you've looked at my YouTube channel before, if you go to the compositing uh, playlist, you'll see lots of other little techniques there for cutting out fine hair. So you can always check those out. However, today in this video, I want to show you something completely different, and that's a plugin by Topaz. So to cut her off the background then, I'm going to go to filter and I'm going to well, actually first of all I just need to unlock this background. Let's just click on that little icon just the once. I'm now going to go to filter Topaz Labs and one down here called Topaz Remask 3. So once I've clicked on that, it takes me into the actual plugin. And first of all, we're presented with our picture being covered with a green overlay. So we need now we need now to tell Remask what we want to cut out and what we want to keep. So over on the left hand side here of the actual toolbar, we've got first of all this little blue paintbrush. And this is where we can tell it to kind of like compute an outline. So I'm gonna be very, very sloppy here and just paint over this part of the hair like so, making sure I can de increase and decrease the size of the brush just like I can in Photoshop using the left and right bracket keys. And I'm gonna paint all over this loose hair, all the way down here like so. Now I'm gonna also include a part of her body, so decrease the size of the brush. I'm just gonna do a very, very rough paint over the edges like so. Now I'm not gonna go into all the little fine areas. This is just to show you a quick overview, if you like, of how this plugin can help you. So once we've done that, in fact, I will just go into this part of the face here. Let's just paint into that area there like that. Now, once we've done that, we now need to say what to keep and what to throw away. And we do that by using these little paint bucket icons under the fill menu. So I'm gonna click on the red one and that's basically what's gonna be cut out. So I wanna tell it now to cut out the background by clicking in that background area and you'll see that it gets filled with red. And I'll just also click in that little bit just there as well. Once we've done that, we then click on compute mask. Click on Compute Mask, Topaz just a little bit of thinking, and eventually it does a very quick um, cutout. And you can see straight away that is really impressive, especially this area here with all the hair. Now what I will also do in this point is I'll go to the top right hand corner of the screen to choose a double up kind of view here, two up view. One of them I want to be the alpha channel or the, the mask that we've done here. This one on the left hand side I want to be my image. So now I can compare between the two.
And then all I would do using Remask is just finesse this cutout by kind of like telling it a little bit more about what I want to keep and what I want to throw away. And I'll do that using the single color selection. So let's just say that so we can certainly see in these parts here, there's a little bit of that background. It looks a bit, a bit cloudy, doesn't it look exactly clear? So I want to get rid of that gray in between the hair. So I'm going to click on the red uh, paintbrush here click on the gray background to tell it, look, this is the color I want to remove from within the hair. When I do that, I click and it samples that color just into this little box. So now I can increase the size of my brush and paint quite loosely over the hair. And it'll look between the area that I'm painting to see if it can remove it. Does a little bit of a calculation. And then over on the right hand side there, you could see that it's actually got rid of that gray between the hair. You can then go around the picture, clicking on green to sample the hair. So if I want to do choose a little bit more of the hair at the top here, I could click, it samples that hair color, then it becomes a brush that I can just paint over very loosely to say, look, have a look under where I'm painting. Is there any more of hair, that color? It'll then do a calculation and bring back that hair. So this is just a very, very quick look at how Topaz Remask 3 can help you with some quite tricky selections. And it is really, really impressive. As you can see from the right hand side here, the view with this alpha channel, how it very, very quickly can do a cutout for you. And let's face it, when we're doing compositing, we don't want to be spending all day doing the cutout. We want to get down to the creative stuff of building the picture. The cutout is the bit we want to get done and dusted so we can move on. So there you go, just three tips and techniques, or two techniques and one plugin, if you like, that I think can really, really help there with your selections, your cutouts, and your compositing. I think sometimes we're all guilty of expecting Photoshop to be like a, a one-click fix for every situation that we come across, but that's never gonna be the case, because every single picture is different. There are so many ways that we can do cutouts within Photoshop. I think the real skill, uh, as retouchers, is getting to learn, no, not just getting to learn, and lots of techniques, but knowing when to use them. Now, I'm a big fan of using something like um, Evernote, and every time I come across a technique, I'll always write it down in language that I understand and store it for future use. So I build up like a, a Photoshop toolbox, if you like, of tips and techniques, so that then, no matter what situation I come across, I know there's gonna be one there for me that I can turn to to get the results I want. I think it's pretty crazy to think that of all the books and the videos and the seminars and the workshops we go to, we can expect to remember everything. So if I could add maybe one extra tip to this video, it's to write stuff down or maybe even just record videos like this just for yourself so that you can then remember how to do certain things. That way you're going to take your retouching, to coin a phrase, to a whole new level. But hey, that's all for this week. As always, make sure you click on the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. And again, I really do appreciate the support. If you just let other people know about this video, Video, well, my YouTube channel and also the iTunes podcast. It's the support from you folks that really does make all this so much more worthwhile putting the videos together. But like I say, that's, uh, that's all for this week. I'll see you next time.